yo what is up everyone welcome back to the channel today's video i'm going to be looking at the battle of bamba bridge apparently this this battle was fought by u.s soldiers like against each other during world war ii which is i mean which is odd um but i'm really excited to get into it and guys before i get into it please help me out subscribe to the channel and also if you love this reaction do me a favor and hit that like button i really appreciate it now let's get into it did you know that two american units fought and shot each other over in northwest england wow. in june 1943. Okay. this is the story of the so-called battle of bamba bridge a skirmish fueled by beer and no small amount of racism by beer Guys, I, I wish I was in my alcohol right now. I don't know. I think I've said this on this channel before. I'm kind of an alcoholic. So, anything that has to do with beer, liquor, whiskey, etc., etc., I really, really stuff that interests me. So, what's, what I'm trying to say in this video is that these guys were drunk a lot. I mean, you can't blame alcohol for what they did. Don't blame alcohol for what they did alcohol was not the reason for what they did probably it was the racism who knows i don't know i'm gonna see it in the video until u.s president harry s truman issued executive order 9981 in july 1948 the branches of the united states armed forces suffered from varying degrees of racial segregation the mm. first clause of the order read as follows it is hereby declared that there shall be equality of treatment and opportunity for all persons in the armed services without regard to race, color, religion, or national origin. Of course, the order didn't erase racism in the military, and it was put into effect some five years after the Battle of Bamber Bridge. Throughout World War II, some two million American servicemen passed through or were stationed in the UK for a variety of purposes, and they weren't always on the job. They often toured the UK and interacted with its denizens. Many American servicemen married English women and brought them back to America when the war was over. More often than not, African Americans were well received by the British populace, at least at the start. When more racist white Americans poured into the UK, they imposed their a-holery upon the British, refusing, for example, to eat at a restaurant that served black people. According to wow. Roy Ottilie's article, Dixie Invades Britain, which was published in 1942, American observers who were in the UK in 1942 when the first contingents arrived from America saw amicable and smooth relations develop between the Negro troops and their British hosts. So much so that certain white American soldiers became openly resentful, and they lost no time in attempting to discipline the British people. Wow. According to an article by historian Joseph Dickinson, the resent was due, at least in part, to the frustration of white American soldiers who saw how open British women were to relationships with black Americans and simply couldn't handle it without chucking a massive tantrum. In the words of author Graham Smith, many young girls- Guys, this is shocking to me. I mean, this is 19, well, 1948, 49. I thought that at this point, I know, of course, racism can never end, like, it's normal, like, I think it's kind of fantasy to think that racism can never, can ever be eradicated. It's not possible. That is fantasy. But, um, in the armed forces, the armed forces, like, you know, where you're supposed to be in a kind of a commemorative, commemorative, <laughs> you would, you would think that race, would not really be an issue that's all you would think but this is really shocking seriously i mean the, when this video was re recommended i was like okay american soldiers fighting against each other like so apparently it seems like this is going to be about race okay not about the alcohol obviously like i said according to an article by historian joseph dickinson the resent was due, at least in part, to the frustration of white American soldiers who saw how open British women were to relationships with black Americans and simply couldn't handle it without chucking a massive tantrum. In the words of author Graham Smith, many young girls found the blacks fascinating, appreciating hmm. their attentiveness and good manners. 
Wow. The United States Army Air Forces, or USAAF, the precursor to the US Air Force, operated out of more than 200 airfields in the UK, each base housing an average of 2,500 men. Among the American units which flew out of the UK was the 8th Army Air Force, and one of the 8th supporting units was the 1,511th Quartermaster Truck Regiment, a racially segregated unit composed of African American soldiers. These men were housed at Air Force Station 569, or more colloquially, Adam Hall in the village of Bembridge in Lancashire, England. Their job was to deliver, via trucks, war material to other air bases in the area. When they were off duty, some of the men enjoyed a pint or two at a watering hole called Ye Old Hob Inn, where they were more than amicable with the local English. When the white Americans started cracking down on this, demanding the establishment of a colour bar in the village, the village's three pubs put up signs reading, Black Troops Only. Hmm. Racism, it seemed, would not be tolerated in Bamber Bridge. Unfortunately, the 234th US Military Police Company, which operated on the north side of- I mean, to be fair, signs like Black Troops Only doesn't really help matters. I mean, I'm not giving excuses to the people that felt that they could be racist or they wanted to be racist, but <laughs> putting a sign black troops only doesn't help matters, to be honest. It doesn't really help matters because it's just going to um, agitate the racists. So, I mean, it doesn't really help. That's just my opinion. 234th US Military Police Company, which operated on the north side of the village, were especially sore about the attentive, well-mannered African-American men winning the hearts of Bamber Bridges women. The MPs had standing orders to arrest American soldiers who were out with- Are you sure it was about them being well-mannered and being tentative? Are you sure about that? I mean, that seems, that seems like a very, very generic reason, don't you think? What do you think, guys? <laughs> without a pass, who weren't dressed properly or who were acting disorderly. On the 24th of June 1943, just days after the race riot back in Detroit, Michigan, they tried to use their power to give the black soldiers of the 1511th a hard time. The consequences were disastrous. While the specifics might vary between sources, the core of the story remains the same. Possibly because an African-American soldier tried to purchase a beer after last orders had been called, MPs Roy A. Windsor and Ralph F. Ridgway entered Ye Old Hob Inn on the night of the 24th and tried to cite one private Eugene Nunn for being without a pass and for wearing the wrong uniform. An argument broke out and the locals, as well as British servicewomen of the Auxiliary Territorial Service, sided with Nunn and the 1511th. An unnamed white British soldier also chimed in, saying, Why do you want to arrest them? They're not doing anything or bothering anybody. The heat hmm. increased, and one private, Lynn M. Adams, of the 1511th, brandished a bottle. In retaliation, Windsor drew his gun. Whoa. It might have gone down then and there, had not a black sergeant by the name of William Byrd managed to defuse the situation. The MPs got into their jeep and were on their way out, but Private Adams was mad, and probably a little drunk, and decided it would be a good idea to throw his bottle at the jeep. The MPs were outnumbered and chose not to retaliate at that moment. Instead, they gathered some reinforcements and ambushed the men of the 1511th as they were walking back to Adam Hall later that night. A fight ensued on the road, possibly with the MPs wielding billy clubs. The 1,511th fought back with bottles and loose cobblestones. Supposedly to stop Private Adams from hurling a stone at him, MP Carson W. Bosman drew his gun and fired. Hmm. The bullet struck the private in the neck, but he wasn't killed. The fight soon subsided, and the men of the 1,511th made it back to Adam Hall, mostly in one piece. At some point during the chaos, a rumor spread throughout the village. A black soldier had been shot in the back and the MPs were out on a manhunt. There seems to be a little confusion about what happened next, but the resounding narrative is that a pissed off crowd of some 200 black men rallied at Adam Hall, standing against their white senior officers and calling for war. It's possible they hmm. would have stormed the village en masse, 
but the 1511th's only black officer, Lieutenant Edwin D. Jones, was able to calm them down for the time being. It wasn't long after that, however, that about a dozen MPs drove into Adam Hall in several jeeps and an improvised armored car fitted with a machine gun. This prompted the 1511th to seize about two thirds of the firearms stored at Adams Hall and either take up defensive positions or drive or run out into the night to meet the MPs head on. The locals were instructed to stay inside and over the next three to four hours, a firefight raged throughout the Bamba Bridge area. Wow. A private of the 1511th, one William Crossland, took a bullet and died, while four or five other soldiers and two MPs were injured. It could have been much, much worse, all things considered. Following this mess, two trials were conducted. In the first, four of the African American men involved in the fight in which Private Adams was shot were found guilty of various offenses, dishonorably discharged, and sentenced to hard labor. In the second trial, 28 of the 35 defenders were convicted of offenses such as ignoring orders, failing to disperse, rioting, mutiny, seizing arms, and firing on officers and MPs. They were sentenced to as many as 15 wow. years, but further reviews saw a reduction in these sentences and the release of some of the men. 15 of them returned to duty in June 1944, just in time for the Normandy landings. All in all, the longest period served by any of the men was just 13 months. Again, things could have been much worse. The commander of the 8th Army Air Force, General Ira C. Eker, believed much of the blame fell on the MPs, whose blatant racism inspired the entire affair. The white officers of the 1511th were also largely to blame, as they did a terrible job of trying to pacify the riding men at Adam Hall and also refused to tend to the wounded among them. At least one of them was reportedly drunk. Following the incident, the 1511th and other trucking units ranks were purged of racist officers and black officers were integrated into the MP units. Things got slightly better after that. Damn guys, that was mad. Like, I didn't expect that kind of... When I saw the... When uh, um, you guys gave me the suggestion, um, this suggestion has been given to me for some few weeks or even a month now, and I actually thought in my head, uh, I, I saw the title, I saw that it was a battle between American soldiers. I never in my... I never pictured that it was about race. Like, was it not doing World War II? That is a war. You are fighting for the same country. Why is he thinking about race at that point? It makes no sense. It, makes, it really makes no sense. In World War II, you, you, you all have a common enemy, right? Have a common enemy. And you are thinking about race at that point. So I, 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 I didn't really think about it. I wasn't even thinking towards race when I... You know, sometimes when I see videos before I react to it, I used to contemplate, you know, um, speculate what the video could be about. So while I, while I was speculating about this video, I, I never, I never in my in my dreams thought that it was about race, never. Which is just ridiculous. Like you all have a, a common enemy. This is a war. I mean, you can do your racism after the war is finished. I mean, I, like I've told you. I don't believe racism can ever end. I think it's fantasy to think it will ever end. But do it when the war is over. I can continue your racism, whatever. But the point I'm trying to make is that it's really, really shocking that people will see racist towards their fellow soldiers. Like, they are, that is, they are supposed to be their brothers. That is, at least from what I understand about the army or soldiers or whatever. Like, These people are supposed to be like your brothers, so race should not matter. And that was nice. It's not, it's not as if this was like 17 something, this is 1949 or so. At that point, it's really shocking that racism was still an issue in the army. I know it will always be an issue, but in the army, really shocking. I didn't really, I didn't really expect that. Wow, that was that was a nice video. Um Guys, I hope you enjoyed the reaction. Some of you really told me to watch this video and 
I, I see why you wanted me to watch the video because it's really really shocking to me anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the reaction thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one peace